Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 106. And if you're familiar at all with some the new new things available in HTML5, you may have heard of the application cache or the ability to use a manifest file to allow offline functionality. Now there are multiple different types of storage in HTML5. There's application cache, there's local storage, there's index db but this module, the HTML5 application cache, is one of the modules that will allow you to have simple caching of web pages so you can view them even when you don't have an internet connection. And this is most likely useful for web, web applications, not just Drupal websites. I'm working on one right now that's actually making use of this module, so I'm going to go through it. It's really simple to get set up. And before we get started, I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also go to codecrowdy.com. Sign up for the newsletter over here on the left. And thanks again today to our sponsor, Drupalize.me. If you're not familiar with Drupalize.me, they're one of the best resources for learning about Drupal. They have hundreds of videos from the very basics to very complex topics on Drupal. And I'm sure no matter what, if you sign up, you'll learn something new. You can use CK20FEB as a coupon code to get 20% off. So go ahead and check out Drupalize.me. Let's go ahead and get started. The first step is going to be to download this app cache module. There is not a recommended release yet. It's very, it's not something you're going to use on many sites, but it's very, I, I guess it's very early stages and the module doesn't have a development version. It hasn't been, it has not had an active commit for a while over a year I believe but it does work I've used it and it seems to be working pretty well on the site that I am working on so the first thing I'm going to do is using Drush I'm going to download the module and I'm going to download the development version if you need to get it from here you can click to view all releases and you can get the development version right here after you download this there's a couple things you're going to need to do you're going to want to open the readme file and take a look at it because it does require some additional setup so if you look at this it basically gives you a little intro to the module but it also says this needs to be added to your themes page template or something very similar to this so since I'm using the Bartik theme on my development site here, I need to go into basically be able to get to the HTML tag because you, in order for the manifest file to work, there needs to be this manifest attribute on the HTML tag. So I went into the into one of the core Drupal modules. It's the system module, and I found the HTML.tpl.php file and I copied this into the templates directory of the Barctic theme. Now you really should be making a sub-theme of Barctic and I have a Daily Dose of Drupal video on that so you can watch that. But just so I can get this working I'm gonna go ahead and just use the actual Barctic theme and then I'm going to drop in this manifest file here or this manifest code I guess that is needed and I don't think you actually need that slash there so I'm going to save this I'm also going to come into Drush and clear the cache just because I just added that html.tpl.php file to the theme the next step is to come into the modules page and turn on this html5 app cache module As soon as that's saved, we're going to click on the configure. Well, actually, we'll start by going to the permissions page because you need to set permissions in order for this to work. There's uh, an app cache option down in here to select who can access the site using the offline cache. So I'm going to give, give that to an anonymous and authenticated and leave, obviously, the administration only to the administrator role. I will save that and hop back into the modules page. As soon as it loads here. Looks like
looks like there the JavaScript has stopped working. There's a file inside this app cache. There's some JavaScript inside this app cache module that has caused a few issues for me as well. So and you can see it it's basically just for iOS devices in Safari. So I'm not actually going to I'm just going to comment out this module or this JavaScript code inside the module because it's not necessary for what I'm doing. I'm only going to be using it on Chrome as you can see. So go ahead and we'll clear the cache again. And things should be closer. I'm going to come in and actually come to the modules page and configure this module and hopefully once we configure it things will begin to work. So you have a couple different options here. First is to enable the offline application cache and here you can set specify specific pages that you want to cache as well as pages never to cache and then you can have a fallback so if the resource isn't found you can have a fallback path that will be cached and then be displayed so I'm but you can also select automatically cache pages so I'm gonna select that option and save it now if I come back here you can see things are looking a little better um, the reason I saw part of the one JavaScript problem was because of the application ca cache JavaScript I believe it caused some things to not quite work the other issue was um, most likely because this html.tpl.php did not get read so I needed to clear the cache again just to get it to catch and in fact I'm gonna try to maybe it was all on that html.tpl.php file so I'm gonna try to undo that and see if my javascript is still working okay so the app cache don't worry about changing the javascript in the app cache module unless you have issues with button clicks or if you click handlers in some of your jQuery custom code that you've written which is one thing that I've ran into in the past but now let's go ahead and now that we have this working you can see in the console of our developer tools you can see that there's application cache entries in here so now if I start clicking around you can see that it adds entries into the application cache and when I come back it continues to add these entries so now as you can see we've got the home page we got the first two options we'll do one more so I've now that I've went through a couple different pages I have a couple different pages in the cache I'm actually going to turn off the wireless I'm currently on wireless right now I'm going to disconnect and I'm now disconnected. I'll try to refresh the actual Code Karate site. You can see I'm not able to connect to the internet. However, if I click here, it works. You can see I can also go to the second one, the third one, but I go to the fourth option. It says connect to the internet to continue. An internet connection is required. So as you can see though, the pages that I went to were cached using the HTML5 application cache by this application cache module actually creating and as you can see I can't get to it anymore actually creating that manifest file that manifest file basically tells Chrome in this case and most modern browsers support this whether it's Safari, IE9, uh, Firefox, Chrome they all support this application cache and it allows you to cache offline content so even if you do not have access you can still get read access to any pages that are inside this cache so that's it for this time on the daily dose of Drupal as always this is something that or as I mentioned before it's something that's probably not going to be used in every site obviously but if you're building a web application and you need some offline functionality for your web application that you're building in Drupal this might be something you want to take a look at as always, follow me on Twitter if you haven't already, and check out Drupalize.me. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.